Hey, this is Chris at Mango, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your very first map using Mango. The steps that we're gonna to follow today are the same steps that are available in our interactive setup guide that will walk you through the steps of this tutorial uh, directly inside your Mango account and also give you access to the sample data that we're going to be using today. Okay, so when you sign into your account for the very first time, you'll be taken to your map portal area. This usually will be the home of all of your maps that you've created in Mango. The portal area is now empty because we haven't yet created a map. So let's go ahead and make our first map by, create, by clicking on the Create New Map button. When the map's first created, we will just see the base map. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to add a layer on top of this base map using our own map data. To do that, we click on the Layers button on the left-hand side and press the Add Layer button. Okay, once you've uploaded data in the future, all of your data sets that you've uploaded previously will be listed here. As this is a new account, it's empty, so we're gonna to have to upload our very first data set by clicking on the Upload Data Set button. You can upload data sets to Mango in a wide range of formats, but today we're going to be uploading a shape file. And to select the files, we click on the green button, and we're gonna be uploading a data set called Sales 2015. Um, as with all shape files, uh, there are four key parts, the DBF, PRJ, SHP, and SHX. We can hold down the control key in order to multi-select those files, then click open, and the upload will begin. The default name for the layer is the same name as the file, so it's sales underscore 2015. Um, let's go and make that a little bit more readable. We'll capitalize the word sales, and we'll get rid of that underscore, and we'll press save. Once we press save, that data set is now going to be uploaded and processed on Mango's, Mango's server and added as your very first layer to the map. When you first upload a new layer, uh, you'll automatically be taken to the layer settings panel. But before we change any of the settings, let's just close the panel and see what we've got. So the data set that I just uploaded is all of the counties in Texas and currently they have the default styling, which is a blue fill and a white outline. Now what I actually want to do with this data, this is sales data, and I'd like to show the counties based on the number of sales. So we're gonna do that by clicking on the layers button, and then we'll see our sales 2015 data set here, and I'll click the edit key, and we'll be brought back to the layer settings panel that we saw earlier. Now we want to do a quantity map, so I'm gonna click on quantity, and we want to have the class breaks based on the total sales. So I'm gonna select total sales, as that's one of the attributes in the data set, and now we'll leave everything else with the default settings and let's hit the save key and see how that looks. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, we have a quantity map on screen uh, that shows all of the counties based on the total number of sales. In the legend on the left hand side here, we can see uh, what that represents. And if we mouse over each one of the colors, uh, we can see the values of the class breaks. Also, we can click on any of the features in the map and we will open up an information panel that contains all of the attribute data for that particular feature. Okay, so there we have it. We've got our first layer on screen. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna change the name of this map because untitled map isn't very descriptive. So let's change the title of this map to Texas Sales 2015. And we'll change the description to Total Reported Sales by distributors in 2015. And you'll notice that the thumbnail here is still showing the default blue. This thumbnail is the thumbnail that will be displayed in your map portal and also on social networks if you share the map via Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. So let's also click the update thumbnail button in order to update that thumbnail. And we'll see now that we now have um, the quantity, uh, quantity style map. Um, the same as the one that we saw on screen. So let's go ahead and press save. We can now see that the map title has been updated. We have a new description and we have our data set. So that's how simple it is. We've made a very simple map in only a couple of minutes using Mango. The next step is to put the map online. When you first create a map in Mango, the map is offline. This means that the only person who can see it is yourself when you're signed in as the administrator. When we turn the map online, the map will become publicly accessible and will also be indexed in Google. Now, with the maps, we also have privacy settings that allow you to password protect the map or restrict who has access to the map, but we'll be covering those features in a later video. So the map's now online. Um, the next step would be to share it. 
So we can do that by pressing the sharing tab. And we have a lot of options here. We can share the map via social networks. We can embed it in an email or we can embed it in our website or blog. Um, let's keep it simple for this tutorial. We're just going to take the link to the map. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to open a new tab in my browser. I'm going to paste in the URL so we can take a look at what other people will see when they access our newly created map. Okay, so there's the map on screen. You can see that the map looks exactly the same as it did when we were in the administration area. The only difference is that the administration tools are no longer visible because this user is an anonymous user and they don't have access to the administration tools. Okay, so there you have it. We created our very first map in Mango. Um, I advise you to go and sign into your account and follow these steps in the interactive setup guide so you can create this sample map for yourself.